Dr. Beeman, Israel's request from Germany is the sixth of its kind on top of the piles of nuclear warheads in Israel's possession. Some have called this uh, sub a weapon of mass destruction. Why does Israel need it? Well, they really don't need the additional uh, Dolphin submarine, nor do they need the additional weapons. But what they do need is signs that the European powers are going to be allied with Israel. And the best kind of uh, alliance that one can have, short of actual marriage, is arms exchanges between these various groups. Now, Germany has a very strong arms uh, industry. It has, uh, historically, throughout the 20th century, think of the Krupp uh, organization, uh, going way back to the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, but this shows that Israel and, uh, and Germany are allies, and also it tacitly uh, says that Germany is supporting Israel's military ambitions. Okay. And so this is really a, almost a symbolic exchange. Well, we talk, you just touched on two issues we're going to get into a little bit later. But first, uh, I want to ask this from our uh, guest over in um, Beirut, Pimor Agaxel. Uh, the German Constitution... It uh, basically bars arms exports to crisis regions. Uh, and recipients of arms have been in many countries in these regions. That include, of course, Israel, as we mentioned, Egypt, another one, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, and Angola. So uh, what does this precondition in uh, Germany's constitution serve? Well, it's, uh, no, I think <coughs> the German attitude and, uh, to, to Israel is something completely something else. They find it very, very difficult to say no to anything that Israel wants. And uh, they might, uh, they might uh, impose that embargo. They might uh, implement it against other countries. But when it comes to Israel, Germany finds it very, very difficult to say no because of the historical, uh, of course, uh, experience. OK, uh, moving on to our guest in Belfast, uh, Dr. Saab Shaf. Uh, Germany is among the world's leading arms exporters, and its weapon sales well, have increased dramatically over the years. Tell us the significance of that. What does that show? Uh, first uh, of all, uh, Germany, uh, historically, uh, it's, uh, I would call it in this sense is a colony of uh, imperialist uh, United States. Since the Second World War up to now, it carries exactly the United States agenda. Uh, after the United States, Germany is the principal donor of both economic and military aid to Israel. While there is a restrictive export regulation bar the sale of weapons, as you mentioned, to crisis areas, the German government always justified this action by describing, as uh, Jurgis trying to say, the special responsibility toward Tel Aviv. Uh, during uh, what the special responsibility then toward South Africa during the Afghan apartheid period, uh, may, one of the main creditors to the apartheid regime was the, the Germans and the U.S. and the U.K., of course. Uh, financially credit to the apartheid government was critical in financing the system itself, the apartheid system. Uh, the, from, if we can say, uh, the 85 up to 93, there is over 3 billion just exports uh, to the apartheid system. And that was uh, against the humanity and international embargoes were uh, again, uh, imposed on uh, that uh, apartheid regime. So the historic uh, history showed us the German government uh, doesn't care about its own constitution. It doesn't care about the international even policy. Uh, but uh, it focuses on one of the things and strengthening the uh, security of Israel and the uh, what we call it the uh, the defense and the security doctrine of the Israelis, which is. To, because of the uh, geographical and uh, position and the size of Israel, Israel cannot have to take its fight uh, to its enemy. And that's why the Dolphi is very important now to the Israeli state. And the exercise they were in the Red Sea, and now we're hearing they want to ship it to the Persian Gulf. That's okay. because it has the backing and the support of the United States and the Germans who buy and they are part of that plan. All of them have the same strategy. Okay, let's find out why that is. Uh, Dr. Beeman, uh, we just had our guest there uh, from Belfast tell us about uh, how, how Germany does not, uh, well, respect uh, this law that it has that's part of the Constitution. But let's find out uh, 
who oversees this, and uh, that is the National Security Council in Germany. And isn't the National Security Council uh, set up uh, basically a, a model as, uh, uh, compared to the U.S. National Security Council in which they've lined up their foreign policy based on those standards? And at the same time, this National Security Council is supposed to oversee uh, the arms uh, that are being sold, but obviously these arms are ending up in various parts of the world. As a matter of fact, according to the latest statistics, uh, there are uh, 51 countries that, have, uh, that should not have received German weapons under strict interpretation of the guidelines. So Dr. Beeman, why is that? Why is it that Germany is allowing this? And what's going on with the National Security Council in Germany that's supposed well, to oversee this? The, there's one, one uh, matter is the Constitution and the law. The other matter is the enforcement. Most of the, uh, of the arms that are being shipped to various parts of the world, Pakistan, Afghanistan, and other parts of the world, Angola, uh, that uh, they should not be going to, uh, still have to be regulated by somebody. And these are mostly private firms that are doing this on their own and it is almost impossible to control the arms uh, trade. And this is, this is really true actually worldwide. The German government should definitely be doing more to enforce its own laws, but they find it impractical and uh, they don't have the, the personnel or the ability to actually do that. Not only that, but you know, the, the current economic situation is such that any government that tries to uh, control trade is going to have a lot of difficulty with its own citizenry because there's a lot of income to be made in arms dealing. Okay. Let me add uh, one point to the uh, business with Israel. It, uh, that is that Germany now is the chief supplier of all military equipment to the Israeli Navy. And so in some ways this is a, a very strong bond, a, a very strong trade bond uh, that will continue on for years and years because the equipment needs to have replacement parts as well as original equipment. Pima Goxel, some are saying that uh, this move by Israel is uh, uh, building up on their past purchases, but uh, is re reflective of uh, their, uh, their worry, as they say, behind Iran's uh, ambitions for the civilian and nuclear program. Uh, do you accept that as a valid point? Well, they, have, oh, they already have three of these dolphin-type uh, uh, submarines. Uh, they are now they have agreed to buy one more, and I think they are negotiating for two more. That will make six if they finalize it all. That's a formidable uh, submarine force. Now, also, I also understand that these submarines are capable of firing uh, missiles with nuclear warheads. Certainly, uh, it's a part of the. Uh, the problem they are having, uh, security problem they are having with Iran, and certainly uh, they will use this as a deterrent against Iran, uh, because the, the submarines uh, give them uh, close proximity uh, to Iranian shore, and therefore firing is much more easier, and it doesn't have to fly over uh, other countries uh, which won't appreciate it. Uh, but it's not only the submarines. I think they are also <coughs> about to get uh, two more missile boats. So they are really uh, boosting up their naval uh, force, which they didn't need in the Mediterranean. Uh, so it's very, you are right in your analysis. This seems to be more for the Gulf and Iran than uh, Israel's traditional uh, uh, Mediterranean security. So th this, is, this has got to do with Iran, no doubt about it. <laughs>